So when we get up into the more intact forest at the end of the uh, valley, the um, the forest is much damper because it's contiguous, it's being uh, moist air fed by glaciers, uh, the rainfall holds longer, and as a result the species richness and biodiversity is far richer. In a few short studies with Dr. Toby Sprabili, he has identified 283 species of lichens in this forest. Uh, three of them are new to BC and Canada, another three are new to North America, and seven are new to science, with one of those species being exclusive to the Inconoplu. Not only that, we've had mushroom scientists into this uh, forest, and Dr. Uh, Aluna Seska found uh, a Theoclibia mushroom that previously was only known to Carmana and, Old, and the Olympic Peninsula, two of the wettest places on our west coast. And the finding of this Theoclibia in the Inconoplu is the first known inland find and also the furthest north. Work that we have done in these forests in sampling windfall uh, stumps in clear cuts have uh, shown that uh, these trees grow at approximately a rate of 450 years per meter of diameter. And we've measured trees in this forest upwards of four meters. And that would suggest that these trees are 1,600 to 2,000 years old. So these trees, once they're cut down, cannot be replaced. Once these trees are flattened to the ground, no generation will see trees or a forest of this stature again. And this is one of the reasons why we're here now. An IPP is proposed for this valley. Uh, one of the things they have to do is put in a transmission line. Well, that means cutting a swath through a forest like this, and it means we're going to lose some of these trees. Then what happens once you have the swath is you've created a wind channel. Then how many other trees are going to be affected and blown down? So this is all part of taking apart an irreplaceable treasure.